Hey all, Nate Granzo here with Wood Magazine. Today I'd like to show you how you can face joint boards too wide for your joiner. Now the conventional method has always been if the board's too wide to face joint on your joiner, you rip it into narrower boards, edge joint, face joint each one of those pieces, and then glue it all back together. But uh, what about those times when you have a highly figured board, something with beautiful flowing grain, and you don't want to put those rip lines in there and interrupt the figure? Or what about the times when you have a seven inch board that you need to, uh, that you need to joint and a six inch joiner to do it? We've got a technique for you here we're going to show you today. Now before you get started, it's worth noting that uh, though this technique will work on boards that are about double the width of your joiner's cutter head, it's probably best to have no more than a third or 30% of the board overhanging the edge of the joiner. And the reason for that is as you're passing the board over the cutter head, if the hinge is right on that, the edge of that joiner, you run the risk of there being some, some tipping action you know, while you're making that cut, so you want to avoid that if possible. Now, if you look down here, we've already removed the factory cutter guard on our joiner. And that's going to vary per machine, make and model. But for the most part, it involves just removing a single screw and uh, pulling that cutter head guard off of there. We replaced it with this style, which is pretty easy to make. We're just talking a couple of pieces of plywood uh, clamped onto your, uh, your joiner's fence. And you want to make sure this cross member here covers the entire length and width of your cutter head. Now, we already went ahead and edge joined our workpiece here, our two wide workpiece. And uh, you're going to want to run the uh, edge that's been joined up against the fence. Now we set our joiner to about a 1 16th inch deep cut. You want to make sure the fence is back as far as it can go. As you can see here, if you can, we've got a, a rabbit just along this edge, very, very shallow. And uh, there are flat points pretty well all throughout this, uh, this rabbit here. If you didn't get it perfect in the first try, there's going to be a little bit of trouble in doing it again. The issue being that these joiners have rabbiting ledges. And this ledge that you just made, that rabbit, is going to hang up on that if you try to run it again. We'll get it set up here. You can see that right there is where it catches, right on this edge here. That's okay. As long as you have two points that are flat along the length of that rabbit, the spacer that we're going to put in there, that, that's gonna work just fine as a reference point. We've got a plywood spacer that I've already cut. You just want it to be a little bit longer and a little bit wider than the rabbit. Um, that being said, we went with plywood as opposed to a solid wood because it's a little bit more resistant to warping. You can use MDF if you had it, but um, try to avoid solid wood, just we want a, a perfectly flat spacer if possible. Double stick tape, double face tape like this works great for holding it on. Uh, it doesn't need too much, just a few pieces to kind of hold it tight. And we want to take that and right up against that rabbit shoulder, we want to go ahead and push that down like so. Well, I said flat, um, but like with this piece here, especially when you get into longer pieces, you are going to end up seeing some pieces that just want to uh, have a little rise in them. That's okay. Uh, the reason we chose plywood is because it's consistent thickness, and that's, that's really the key here. And the fact that uh, it's got a little bow in it, not a big deal. I think the, uh, the rollers on the thickness pointer should push that down just fine. Now what you want to do is take this entire stack Get your uh, thickness planer set up to accommodate the thickness of both, as you can see here. And then you're just going to want to run that through. Now having that flat, um, that very consistent thickness on the bottom side, that spacer being consistent, that's going to give us a flat surface on top. And the next step, of course, being once this side is flat, you can pull the spacer off, flip the piece over, and then get rid of that rabbit that we made on the joiner. <laughs> Next step is we want to go ahead 
and remove this, uh, this spacer that we've got secured on there with double stick tape. Then, like I said before, we want to go ahead and make another run, this time removing that shallow rabbit that we've got. Nicely jointed board that was too wide for a joiner originally, and that should be ready for your workpiece.